All right, gang, I said I'd make a video in four minutes and 58 seconds or less about all the stuff on the board, so here we go. We know that Article 1 creates the legislative branch, which is Congress. It's a bicameral legislature. Congress is the House of Representatives and the Senate. In the House, you must be 25 years old, a seven-year citizen, live in the state you represent. There are 435 of them in the House. It's based on population. The larger states get more votes. The littler states don't get as many votes, and they serve for two-year terms. The Senate, 30 years old, nine-year citizen, live in the state you want to represent. There's 100 of them, two from each state. The smaller states benefit because all the states are equal. They serve for six years. The House of Representatives have the Speaker of the House. They're third in line to be the POTUS. Remember, the House of Representatives impeaches the President of the United States. The Senate physically removes the President of the United States. Four have been impeached in history. None of them have been removed. In order to have a bill become a law, a bill begins in either House of Congress. A simple majority is needed in one House of Congress, then it goes to the other House of Congress. The President signs it, becomes a law. The President vetoes it, it goes back to Congress for two-thirds of vote to override the presidential veto. There are powers of Congress. Congress can lay and collect taxes. They can create post office and post roads, punish counterfeiters, punish pirates on the high seas, yar, create an army and navy, coin money, grant part, grant, ah, no, no, grant patents and copyrights, promote arts and sciences, create a national, create the naturalization process, declare war, and they have the necessary and proper clause, which means they can declare any laws that they think are necessary and proper at the time. There are also powers denied to Congress. They cannot pass ex post facto laws, which are retroactive, meaning you can't make something illegal and then at the time that it was legal, arrest someone for doing something at the time that was legal that is now illegal. You also cannot suspend habeas corpus, which means you must tell someone what they're being arrested for, why they're being arrested, and you can't just throw them in jail for doing nothing. Also, they can't interfere with the slave trade past 1808. That's not a big deal. We then have Article 2, which is the executive branch, President of the United States. In order to be the president, you must be 35 years old, a 14-year resident, and a natural-born citizen. Their powers, they can grant pardons. They can grant reprieves, meaning shorten a prison sentence. They are the commander-in-chief of the military. They make treaties. They veto laws. They appoint cabinet members. They also appoint ambassadors to other con countries. And they appoint Supreme Court justices who are there for life. Cabinet members, you say? Well, these people are the advisors to the President of the United States. They make up the Secretary of State, Interior, Education, Veterans Affairs, Attorney General, Homeland Security, Health and Human Services, Housing, Trade or Commerce, Defense, Agriculture, Energy and Transportation, Climate Change. Now, also, that is about it for the President of the United States. Enjoy. Let's look at Article 3 of the branch of government. The Judicial Branch, which is the Supreme Court. They are appointed for life. It's important that a president chooses them wisely because if they change their minds, they're there for life. And also, I mean, if they're there for life, that's a long darn time. You better choose good because you want them to have the same opinions as you. What is the power of the judicial branch, the Supreme Court? Interpret the Constitution. They should remain neutral when making decisions. They're really not doing that, but that's what they're supposed to do. There are nine, nine Supreme Court justices. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Today it's mainly a Supreme, it's a Supreme Court that's conservative. Article 4 talks about the relations among the states. They are to be every sing every person is to be treated equally in all states. One state cannot be treating a citizen differently than another. Also, states cannot create treaties or alliances or confederations with other states, nor can they create armies with other states. That means the Civil War was unconstitutional. There's also a fugitive slave law, which means that if a slave runs away and goes from one state to another state, that slave must be returned to the state to which that slave was a state in which basically says that the non-slaveholding states have to help, well, enforce slaveholding, which isn't really that fun. Also, you must follow the laws of the state that you are in, not from. So you follow the state that you are in. If you are in Colorado, you do what is legal in Colorado. If something is not legal in Georgia, and but it's legal in Colorado, and you're in Georgia, you follow the laws in Georgia, not in Colorado. But man, no. And also, you cannot flee from one state to another. If you commit a crime in Rhode Island and you go to Delaware, you're still guilty. They will bring you back to Rhode Island. You can leave the country, which I highly advise doing it. Oh, no, I only have 56 more seconds. The fifth article is how to pass an amendment. You need two-thirds of Congress and three-fourths of states. It's very difficult to pass an amendment because we don't want to just continually change the Constitution all the time. So, again, three-fourths of Congress, three, uh, two-thirds of Congress, three-fourths of states. Two-thirds of Congress, three-fourths of states. Article 6, there's nothing higher than the Constitution. Who cares? Article 7, no one cares. Ooh, the Electoral College. The Electoral College are the group of people that vote for the President of the United States. There are 538 votes in the Electoral College, 270 to win. The electors are based on their population. The larger states have more votes, and the smaller states have less votes. It has happened where presidents have not won the popular vote, but have won the Electoral College. Oh, no, I only have 16 seconds left. So the Electoral College is a big deal. You should be able to explain that in as much detail as possible. Uh-oh, 12 seconds. The amendments. These are changes to the Constitution. The first 10 amendments are the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment, the five freedoms. Speech, press, religion, assembly, petition. The Second Amendment, right to bear arms. Oh, man, it's four minutes and 58 seconds. You guys win.
The Third Amendment says no quartering troops in people's homes during a time of peace. Remember the American Revolution? You can't quarter people's troops in house. It's not okay. The Fourth Amendment, no unreasonable searches or seizures without probable cause. You must have a warrant. You must have probable cause. You must have a reason to go into someone's car or someone's house or search them if they did something wrong. If there's no probable cause or if there's no reason or if there's no warrant, you can't go through their stuff. Number five, the Fifth Amendment is the rights of the accused citizens. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you by the state. Do you understand these rights to which I have read to you? You are innocent until proven guilty. Those are the rights of the accused citizens. So that's kind of the way that goes. And also, you can't be put in double jeopardy, meaning if you commit a crime and you are found innocent on trial, they can't just arrest you again and try to put you on trial for the same thing. They've already found you innocent. You're all set. They can't just keep arresting you and arresting you and arresting you. O.J. Simpson. The Sixth Amendment is the right to a speedy and fair trial, meaning that you are not allowed to know the jury. It must be impartial. And also, they can't just keep you in jail for like eight years if you committed a traffic violation. That's not okay. So it's got to be quick. And also, you can't know the judge and you can't know the jury. That would be totally biased. We're going to go back to the Fifth Amendment because you also have the right to plead the Fifth, which means you don't have to incriminate yourself. They can't put you on the stand and be like, did you do it? No, I plead the Fifth. The defense has to prove that you did something and the prosecuting, or sorry, the defense has to make sure you are innocent. The prosecution Since I'm already over six minutes, I might as well drink my coffee. You are innocent until proven guilty and the prosecutor has to find a way to prove that you're guilty. The defense, defense, they're the ones trying to prevent you from going to jail. Already did right to a speedy and fair trial. The Seventh Amendment, the right to a trial by jury, meaning you can't just get arrested and then just like thrown in jail because a judge says you're guilty. No, you have to go before a jury. Now, Judge Judy, that's different because their people are just suing for financial purposes, but like murder or rape or anything like that, you're going before a jury. This is all the stuff that's on your test. I hope you have a good time. Remember, you're supposed to pick any of these amendments. The First Amendment is definitely going to be on the test. Seven minutes and 21 seconds, not bad. Be good.